Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod Sleep Stories. My name is Laura, and I am going to tell you a wonderful story that will lull you into a peaceful and restful sleep. Tonight, we will follow the journey of Snowy Owl, a Penobscot Native American, as he searches the mountainous, beautiful landscape in hopes of finding the love of his life. Before we begin, let us take a moment to find comfort in the space we are in. Settle down into your mattress. Focus on how soft your bed is. Feel the way it cradles your body, embracing you and inviting you to let your body fully relax. With every breath you take, picture yourself sinking deeper and deeper into the mattress. Truly allow yourself to feel how wonderful it is to just lie here. There are no expectations of you here. Nothing for you to do but sink deeper and deeper into the mattress. As you come closer and closer to a night of restful sleep. Pay attention to how your body feels. Are you holding any tension in your muscles? Carrying any weight from the day? As you lie in bed, picture the mattress as a giant sponge. Imagine all that tension and all the stress of the day being soaked out of you and disappearing out of sight. Feel it melting out of you, leaving you totally and completely relaxed. Our story begins deep within what are now the Appalachian Mountains of Maine. It is mid-fall, and the earth is preparing to drift into a deep, peaceful slumber. For now, the landscape is a sea of red, orange, brown, and green, as the trees shift in colour with the cold air. In the coming months, the leaves will pile up on the soft green grass and glide through the air, traveling for miles and spreading the colors of autumn everywhere they go. It is in these mountains, nestled at the base of a rocky peak, that you will find a cozy wigwam. The wigwam is in the shape of an igloo carved lovingly using the plants and trees of the area. The outside is crafted of fine waterproof bark from the birch trees that pepper the landscape around the base of the mountain. The home melts flawlessly into the stunning natural backdrop It looks as if it has always belonged there, and always will. Inside the wigwam, a man with sleek black hair rises from his bed of warm animal pelts. He stands and stretches, gratefully greeting the fresh morning air. His name is Snowy Owl and he has lived in this wigwam alone for months, since losing his parents last winter. 
Snowy Owl smiles as he looks out over the incredible landscape. The sea of warm toned trees lights a fire within him, reminding him of how lovely it is to simply be. He sets off into the forest, walking a familiar path to collect water. The dirt shifts and crunches under his feet. The path is worn under his feet. A blueprint of his daily routine, lovingly etched into the earth. He hums as he meanders along the winding path. Down, down, down into the small valley by the mountain. As he walks, he listens to the rustle of the trees shifting in the breeze, the melodic rustle of the leaves, the rhythmic crunch of his footsteps in the soil, and soon the babbling drone of the river become the soundtrack of his journey. Overhead, the chickadees and cardinals sing to one another as they flit between the lofty branches. The chickadee's call resembles their own name. A light, airy, chickadee-dee-dee rings through the air every time they open their beak. When they call, their little feathers ruffle as they puff out their sand-coloured chest. For an instant, Snowy Owl is almost sure He can see the chickadee's little heart beating. Then, the river comes into view. Snowy Owl finds his pace slowing as he nears the water, as if he needs more time to take in and appreciate the scene. The water rumbles over rocks and fallen trees, journeying from the snowy mountains above and then winding its way closer and closer to the coast. Snowy Owl finds himself watching the river disappear over the distant horizon. He knew that the river emptied into the ocean. His father had told him stories of it when he journeyed there long, long ago. The ocean was said to be a vast expanse of water, reaching all the way to the horizon. Rocky coastlines surrounded this water, and waves of white and indigo found their way from the horizon to the shore, where they would splash and disintegrate into a frothy ocean foam. For quite some time, Snowy Owl had longed to see the ocean. For quite some time, he had longed to see the ocean with someone by his side. Snowy Owl had never been able to take a wife. His parents and himself had lived in isolation within these mountains for years. And though Snowy Owl loved it, he often felt as if something was missing. Further upstream, he saw two delicate deer dipping their muzzles in the fresh water. The doe and the buck nuzzle against one another accompanying each other to the river, to the fields where they feasted, to the meadows where they slept. Even in the pine trees above him, chickadees buried themselves in each other's downy wings. They huddled together, joined in the coldest nights of winter and the warm, bountiful nights of summer. 
Snowy Owl often dreamt of walking down the stream with a wife. They would gather their water together here. They could fish here together and speak of the deer and the chickadees in hushed whispers. To find a wife, he would have to journey beyond his cosy home. But today, Snowy Owl decided that was exactly what he must do. He collected the icy water from the stream and started the beautiful walk back to his home. He began to collect things that he needed for the trip. Bags of fragrant dried corn and seeds, fresh fish for the long journey, and pelts for warmth. He stepped into his wigwam one last time. The sweet, spicy aroma of clover and birch hung heavy in the air. It was almost enough to invite him to curl up in bed and stay in for the day. His home here was cosy, a nest of his very own that he would surely miss. But he had a new home to make, and with love in his heart, he bid goodbye to the wigwam that had been his house for so many years. He started his journey by going south, walking along the winding river. As his father had told him, the river would lead him towards the ocean, where he would surely be able to find more people. As he walked, he hummed songs of his people, songs that had been passed down for generations, from parent to child, parent to child, parent to child. They were songs that were sung around campfires and in wigwams as small children drifted off to sleep. And now, they were the melodic soundtrack of his very own journey. He walked happily along the river, breathing in the brand new scenery the autumn trees stretched out for miles. He liked to imagine all the animals finding refuge under them, all the birds curled up in nests among the fiery leaves, all the bears and deer curled up in their shade. The day passed by lazily as he meandered alongside the river, he gazed at the sky as the bright sun rose to its peak and began to slide ever so slowly down the other side. The sky and the forest became mirrors of one another. The sky was painted with pinks and oranges and yellows. Snowy Owl was in a world of warmth and he began to find himself feeling sleepy. The weight of his journey in the day hung heavily on him. He decided it was time to make camp for the night, though he wished he was sleeping in the company of others. This spot would have to do. But when he rounded the corner, he was met with the most beautiful sight he had ever seen. A woman stood in the centre of the river, on a large rock, gathering water. Her long dress nicked at the edge of the coursing river, but she didn't seem to mind. She was a stunning silhouette against the backdrop of the setting sun. He could hear her singing. The melody seemed to dance and sway as it floated through the air to reach his ears. She gazed up at him, sensing his presence. Her long, sleek black hair fell in her face. She brushed it away, revealing dark, expressive brown eyes that had a warmth in them 
similar to that of the setting sun, just behind her. She seemed surprised to see him, but not startled. She simply glided off the rocks, navigating her way to the shoreline with grace and ease. In one hand, she carried a pot of water. Snowy Owl could hear the water splashing against the edges of the vase as she landed on the soft, rocky edge of the river. In the other hand, she held a basket of apples. Without saying a word, the woman tiptoed towards him. There was a hint of a smile on her lips, and her eyes glowed with kindness. Snowy Owl tried to find something to say, but the words weren't flowing for him. The woman walked until she was mere inches from him. She removed an apple from her basket and handed it to Snowy Owl. He took it, hesitantly, but she nodded at him, encouraging him. Her eyes were mesmerizing, almost hypnotic, and Snowy Owl felt a deep desire to do whatever she wanted. Snowy Owl thanked her softly and introduced himself as Snowy Owl. The woman smiled at his name. Deep within himself, Snowy Owl felt an intense connection to her. A desire to be by her side, to speak longer to her. But the woman turned and began to walk away. My name is Little Bird, she murmured like a gust of wind winding its way through the forest. The woman was gone, disappearing into the thick forest of pine trees, just beside him. Snowy Owl began to set up his camp for the night in a daze. He had never felt like that before with someone. He felt so connected, so tuned in to her energy into her smile. In the morning, he would find her village and visit her. Perhaps she felt the same. With a steady click, 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 Snowy Owl started a fire with his flint and some dry autumn leaves. He sat by the fire for hours as the moon rose high in the sky, painting the landscape with its silvery light. He wondered if the woman was looking at the moon, just like he was. It was then that Snowy Owl heard a sonorous who, who, who in the branches hanging over his head. A great horned owl fluffed its wings over his head. Its dark downy feathers glistened in the light of the moon. Be wary of the witches. That woman's family will only put you in danger, the great horned owl called down to him. Be wary of their magic. She is a witch, Snowy Owl whispered up into the branches of the tree. She is the daughter of a witch, young Snowy Owl. You must be careful. Her heart is not one to be won. With that, the great horned owl dove off the branch and silently glided off into the stars, disappearing from view. Snowy Owl sat by the crackling fire in disbelief. How could it be true? He had felt so strongly for her. The energy between them was strong. Perhaps if the mother was to meet him, she wouldn't think ill of him or place bad energy upon him. Snowy Owl nestled into his blankets. All around him the sounds of the forest seemed to crescendo. The crickets sang into the night air, gleefully playing their tune to the last few days of warm weather. 
Above it all, he heard the evocative call of loons on a lake nearby. Their calls echoed out against the inky black sky, tingling his ears with their melodic hum. Soon, Snowy Owl found himself drifting closer and closer to rest. He felt the warm, heavy blanket of sleep creep over him, inch by inch. When the sun rose in the morning, Snowy Owl opened his eyes to see the warm rays of light washing over the land. The sunlight reflected on the river, shining in his face, encouraging him to greet the day with the rest of the universe's creatures. All along the river, deer dipped their soft muzzles in the current, washing down their breakfast with the icy mountain water. As Snowy Owl rose to his feet, the deer bounded off into the forest, hopping off with incredible grace. Snowy Owl readied himself to head into the forest in search of Little Bird. The image of her smile was burnt into his memory, and he knew he couldn't leave this place without seeing it again. He wandered through the thick forest of pines, following a worn trail, much like the one he had left behind at the mountains. He found himself walking through a peaceful forest and into a large meadow. The meadow was awash with scarlet reds and deep indigos. A large blueberry field that seemed to stretch on for miles. The air around him was fragrant, with ripe berries. All around him, the perfect blue spheres clung to branches, begging to be picked. But Snowy Owl continued on. He walked through the fields, taking deep, satisfying breaths of that sweet, sweet aroma. As he reached the end of the field, a picturesque sight came into view. A large wigwam unlike any he had ever seen, surrounded by smaller wigwams. They looked as if they had been here for generations. The birch was covered in thick carpets of lichen, Climbing ivy wandered up the birch walls, winding and melding into breathtaking patterns that can only be found in nature. Smoke rose from the centre of the wigwam, and the smell was absolutely delightful. It was the smell of a stew bubbling over an open fire. He could practically taste the fresh herbs, the apples, the meat. Taking a deep breath, Snowy Owl wandered towards the wigwam. A group of twelve young women gazed up at him in unison. Among them, Little Bird smiled sweetly. A woman emerged from the wigwam. Her long, grey hair fell to her waist in intricate braids. She wore layers of beads that glistened against her simple elk dress. The mother of the twelve girls, the woman introduced herself as Spotted Elk. She invited Snowy Owl to join them for stew, and he happily agreed. But Little Bird didn't seem pleased with him agreeing to stay. Over the next few hours, Snowy Owl sat by the fire and ate stew with the women. Spotted Elk revealed that she and her daughters had lived here for generations. They were all married, except for Little Bird. Their men were up in the mountains, hunting enough food for them to survive the winter. 
Snowy Owl could feel every single beat of his heart. Little Bird wasn't married, and her family seemed rather eager to marry her off. As Snowy Owl thought fondly of this new information, Spotted Elk pointed to the field he had just returned from. She asked Little Bird and Snowy Owl to collect some berries and bring them back to be stored. Snowy Owl felt his face flush with colour. He was being given an opportunity to speak to Little Bird, to spend time with her. He decided in that moment that it wouldn't be wasted. Snowy Owl and Little Bird walked away from the village in silence. When they reached the blueberry fields, Snowy Owl could feel Little Bird's kind gaze fall on his face. Snowy Owl spoke of where he was from and where he was going as they knelt over, collecting blueberries together. Are you lonely? Little Bird asked. She peered up at him as she piled blueberries in her basket. Every time Little Bird spoke, it was like the sweetest music he had ever heard. I am lonely. I'm looking for a companion through life. The words slid off his tongue before he could even realise it. Little Bird's smile grew. Her eyes burrowed into his soul as she gazed deeply at him. Snowy Owl continued in a low, dreamy voice. I've heard there is an ocean at the end of this river. It is a vast, beautiful body of water, with waves of blue and white, and beaches of sand and rock. Little Bird chimed, I've heard of that place. I've longed to visit for many, many years. Snowy Owl asked why she hadn't visited yet, and Little Bird looked back towards her house. We have rules here, Snowy Owl. We've had rules here for many, many years. Little Bird stepped forward, taking Snowy Owl by the hands. Her touch was like magic to Snowy Owl. He felt his knees weaken under him as warmth flooded his whole body. Little Bird leaned forward, whispering to him, I can sense you are a man with a kind heart and good intentions. Do not be fooled here. Tonight, my mother will invite you to stay in the wigwam. If you agree to stay, you must come with me in the middle of the night. Come where? Snowy Owl asked. Little Bird brushed her hair from his face and softly replied to the ocean. Snowy Owl's hand wrapped around Little Bird's. He traced his thumb along her palm. In that moment, they were truly connected. Little Bird placed her hand on his face. Her amber eyes glistened as she gazed into his. Do you promise to take care of me? to be kind to me always, she asked. I do, always, he replied. He had never been so sure of anything in his life. Then you must come with me tonight. Little Bird's final words came in a whisper. She turned with her basket of blueberries and wandered back to her home, urging Snowy Owl to follow her. Just like Little Bird had said, Spotted Elk invited Snowy Owl to stay for the night. Snowy Owl agreed, and before long, night fell over their home. Snowy Owl curled up in the wigwam. It wasn't warm or cosy like the one back home. There was something unfamiliar about it, something inaccessible, as if the home had been abandoned for ages. He watched the shadow of the fire dance against the birch bark of the wigwam for what seemed like hours. He could hear the whispers of the sisters in the distance 
and he couldn't help but think of the great horned owl, who had warned him about the witches here. In the dead of night, he felt a warm hand caress his face. Little bird beckoned him to stand, urging him to be as quiet as a mouse. The moon hung, heavy and full, over the landscape. The forest was alive with the soundscape of night. Little bird tiptoed across the ground, leading Snowy Owl by the hand. She seemed to glide effortlessly across the layers of pine needles on the ground, hardly making a sound. But there was urgency in Little Bird's steps. She glanced over her shoulder every few feet, ensuring that no one had followed. By the time they were passing through the blueberry fields, Snowy Owl opened his mouth to speak. Little Bird hushed him with a silent, pleading look, and they continued on. Soon, they could hear the steady babble of the river, just over a small hill. Little Bird skated across the ground, more adeptly now, steering Snowy Owl towards that river, their salvation. Bobbing in the river, there was a small canoe, just big enough for the two of them. Snowy Owl has never been in a canoe before, but watching Little Bird slide in so gracefully erased any hesitation he was having. He sat down, feeling the canoe rock gently with his weight. As Little Bird untied them, Snowy Owl saw the spotted elk standing at the top of the hill. With a whoosh, the canoe was off, dipping and diving over the river, around the bends and curves. Spotted elk disappeared behind them as they floated off towards their new beginning. Cool water lapped up at Snowy Owl's hands as he helped little birds steer. The air was washing over them and the fresh scent of the water calming them even as they worked their way around rocks and logs. Safe now, Little Bird explained everything to Snowy Owl. Her mother was a witch, keen on trapping men in the village and harming them. Little Bird had grown tired of her mother's dark ways and had longed for years to escape and live a peaceful life on the coast. Snowy Owl wrapped Little Bird's hands in his. I will give you a peaceful life. We will live together with no sorrow, just abundant happiness. Little Bird smiled, tears rimming her eyes. Snowy Owl urged her to sleep while he continued to paddle. Once they reached their future home, he would awaken her. Little Bird curled up with her head on Snowy Owl's lap. He could feel her gentle rhythmic breathing, and it soothed his soul. He paddled through forests and meadows and blueberry fields, watching with admiration as different pieces of wildlife blurred past him. The sun began to rise. The rays sparkled against the water illuminating fish and rocks beneath the waves. In the distance, he could see it, the ocean. It looked endless. In the rising sun, it was a mirror of pink and orange. A long, sandy beach surrounded the water, creating a cozy cove. Snowy owls stared at the ocean completely mesmerized. He could hear the sounds of the waves lapping the beach. He could feel the tang of salt water in the air. It was a freshness unlike anything he had ever encountered before. Gently, he brushed Little Bird's hair aside, waking her up. She blinked and sat up, 
Snowy Owl watched as her eyes lit up with wonder at the sight before her. We're going to have a beautiful home here, Little Bird chimed. We will, Snowy Owl promised, placing his hands over his wife's. The ocean and beach before them were just the beginning of their bright future. A bright future they would enjoy together. I hope you've enjoyed this sleep story and that it's helped you reach a restful, peaceful sleep. Please join me again tomorrow night for another story. Until then, sweet dreams.